Using Zone Director and Windows Server 2012 R2, we're going to configure Radius for 802.1x authentication. Quick introduction, 802.1x is an IEEE security standard for network access. We have some authentication participants that we need to talk about. First is the supplicant. This is going to be your smartphone, laptop, desktop computer. It can even be an IP phone as well. Your authenticator, that's the device that controls network access, and he also passes the authentication messages to the authentication server. Now let's talk about the authentication server for a second, AAA or authentication authorization and accounting. It has to be a compliant authentication server, Radius, there's many different flavors, LDAP, as well as others. Some prerequisites we need to talk about, Active Directory and the network policy server needs to be installed on Windows Server and the service needs to be started. We need to have reachability between Zone Director and the Radius server. If we're utilizing firewalls or access lists for filtering, we'll need to double check this piece. Last, Windows Server, we just need to verify that we do have a valid certificate installed on it. All right, let's get started. So we're connected to the Windows 2012 server. What we need to do is we need to create a user. This user is going to be used to authenticate for these services. So we're going to navigate to Tools, then we're going to go to Active Directory, Users and Computers. All right, great. From this screen, we're going to go over to Users, right click, and what we're going to do is we're just going to go down to New and then select User. Let's give him a name, we'll call it ZD Lab, and then we're also going to make the user logon name the same thing, ZD Lab, no spaces, and click on Next. All right, we're going to set a password, and then we're going to set this password to never expire. Probably not a best practice, but lab demonstration, you get the drift. And then we'll click on Next. And we'll click on finish the users created. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that user and go to properties. And what we're going to do in here is we need to go to the dial in tab. There's a radio button for allow network access. We're going to select that. Once the user authenticates successfully, we want to make sure that they have full network access. This would be the same thing as if it were an employee per se. Then what we're going to do is click on the member of tab. We need to add them to the ZD Labs group. And the reason we're doing that is we manage authenticated users through a group versus managing them individually. It makes it much easier. All right, so the group is there. We verified it under check names. So we'll click on OK, and then we're going to click on Apply and OK. Let's minimize this. We're going to go to Tools and Network Policy Server. Now we're going to add a new Radius client that we can build policies around. Remember at the beginning of the video I talked about authenticators? Well, in this example, Zone Director will be our authenticator. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Radius Clients and Servers, Configure Radius Clients, and then Radius Clients. We're going to right-click and select New. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give it a friendly name. For this, we're going to give it a name as Zone Director. We'll be able to keep track of it. We're going to input an IP address here. You can verify this and use DNS if you want. It will take an IP address or a DNS address. And then last, we're going to add the shared secret. Now the shared secret we need to remember, we'll have to configure this on Zone Director shortly. We're going to do two things. We're going to create a connection request policy. This will separate our 802.1x queries from the rest of our connection request queries. And then we're going to do a network policy. This is basically going to set conditions and requirements for wireless devices or users before network access is granted. In the network policy server application, we're going to go to the top of our tree and select NPS local. Now we're going to hit this drop down box and select Radius Server for 802.1x wireless or wired connections. Then we'll click on Configure 802.1x. Now we're going to select Secure Wireless Connections. We'll give it a name, ZD Wireless. Click on Next. Now we added Zone Director earlier, so we can select Zone Director from the window here, and then we'll go ahead and click on Next. Now we need to set an authentication method. We're going to use Microsoft Protected EEP and click on Configure. Here we can see that our certificate is there and installed. If we don't have one, we can add one from this screen, or if we have multiples, we can select the correct one. Looks good. We'll click on OK. We'll hit Next, and now on this screen, we can specify user groups. Remember earlier we talked about we use groups to handle the authentication of multiple users, so we'll use the ZD Labs group and go ahead and click that to add it. And now we'll hit Next. Now, configure traffic controls. This is the network policy we talked about. We can add dynamic VLAN assignments, things like that if we need to. We don't have any need for that in this demonstration, so we're just going to click on Next. 
Now we can click on configuration details from this screen and get a large expanded view of what we actually configured. If we see anything that's off here, we can go back and correct this, but for us it looks good. So we're gonna jump back out and click finish. Remember, within Network Policy Server, if you ever need to review or modify your policies, you can go to Policies in the Tree and expand that. You have Connection Request Policies, Network Policies. You can take a look at those and make changes as needed. Okay, the next piece, we need to point Zone Director towards our radio server that we just created. So once we're in the Zone Director UI, we're going to navigate to Services and Profiles and AAA Servers. We need to add the authentication server from here. So we'll navigate up to Create and we'll click on that button. We're gonna give it a name. In this case, we'll just call it Radius, and then we'll select the Radius radio button. Next, we need some information in here. We're gonna to have to add the IP address of our Radius server, and then we're gonna use the default port of 1812. You may use something different on your side. Then we'll add the shared secret. It's the same shared secret that we had configured in the NPS server earlier. All right, we'll click on OK. Now what we need to do is we need to test the user that we created in Radius from Zone Director against that Radius database. So we go to Test Against and select Radius. Enter the username of ZD Lab and the password, and we click Test. Now it tells us it's successful, and it will be assigned the role of default. That's perfect. That's what we need. So now we can go create a wireless LAN. We navigate to wireless lands and we click on create. Now we're gonna name this, we're just gonna name it radius WLAN. This is for testing obviously. And then that will auto populate the SSID as well. For the WLAN usage type, we're gonna keep it standard usage, but authentication, we're gonna select 802.1x EEP. Authentication server, we're gonna select the radius server there that we configured. And then we're going to select for encryption WPA2 and AES. Now we have advanced options here. I'm showing you this so that you have an understanding that there's more you can do there. If you need to add dynamic VLAN assignments, things like that, you can do that from this screen. All right, we're going to close that. If you ever need to go in and review or modify the role that was created, you can go to services and profiles and then just navigate down to roles. Here the role is displayed. You can click on edit. Go and make changes, review it, anything you might need to do there, but that's where it's at. None of this is any fun if we don't test it. So we're on a Windows 10 machine. We're going to select the Radius WLAN network that we created, and then we're going to click on Connect. Now, once this piece is connected to it, it's asking us for a username and password. Remember, we need to use the Radius username and password that we created. Once we enter this and click on OK, Zone Director is going to forward those authentication messages to the Radius server. Radius server will respond back to Zone Director. All of the authentication traffic happens between the two of them, and then that's once it's authenticated, passed back to the client, as you can see here, connected and secured. So we'll just open a browser, see if we can hit google.com, and we can, awesome, we're connected to the internet. Everything worked as expected, and that's it. We've configured 802.1x using Radius and Zone Director. Check the description box below for great resources located on the Ruckus support portal. There you can find KB articles, documentation, videos, and more. Thanks for watching.